Cool. This this is the Peloton that I want to check out, right? And again, I'm it's weird only because of who it's okay. kind of marketed to, right? And it's something I've kind of been trying to figure out for a while now, and I've not really had the answer to it. Um, can someone explain to me why it seems as if because I think some of these marketing departments, as as much as people like to like you know point fingers and you know ha ha he he at these adverts that you know probably don't hit the mark or are a little bit tone deaf. I think a lot of these marketing events, the marketing initiatives are usually driven by customer insights. They usually go out there, they kind of scope the field, see what people are saying, judge the sentiment, and then kind of try to reply or answer or basically deliver a piece of content that speaks directly to that audience, right? So this Peloton ad, as cringy as it may be, I think it definitely does speak to the core audience of Peloton. And if anything, it does represent the trouble that some of these luxury higher ticket brands have in terms of communicating the fact that they only appeal to people who have you know a disposable income high net worth whatever it may be right or good jobs whatever it may be and the one thing that's always really this really kind of i've really been confused about when it comes to advertising marketing especially when it comes to marketing geared more so towards women or towards young women or well, towards them um, you know women that are like establishing their career i'd say between the ages of like 19 and 45 why is it that, especially with that documentary that's out at the moment about that Italian influencer, Chiari, what's her name again? Let me see if I can get it up on here. Uh, uh, Chiari, what's her name? That's the one. Chiari, Chiari Ferragani, Chiari Ferragani, I'm posted, right? This girl. So this lady here, even though they're, they're, it's got like two star, one and a half star review on IMBD, but this young lady is an Italian influencer, which I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of, right? So Chiara Ferragini, right? An, an Italian influencer, it's, it's a documentary called Unposted. I think it's available now on Amazon. And essentially, you know, follows this Italian influencer around the world as she, you know, basically influences. But if you look at her story, you look at where she's come from. So essentially just a rich girl that, you know, buys fashion and got popular on social media. You know, you've heard that story before. It's all well and good. The issue that I have with it is that I don't understand why norm, your average, your, your kind of everyday girl on Instagram looks up to a chiara i don't get it why are why are fem why are women so quick to be fans of people who are just uber rich and you know clearly they're only famous because their parents were able to make a buttload of cash and give them some money so they can pursue their life on social media i don't get i don't see why that's compelling content similar to the kind of olivia jade girl right um the, with the i think she's the daughter of the woman that got charged for the uh college um, enrollment scandal thing why was she so popular on YouTube when she essentially just a rich girl? Is it because girls are, as most people are, quite, quite just curious to see how the other side live? But if there's nothing relatable about it. She, you know, she, she Her bills are paid before they even hit her account. She gets a monthly stipend in her account that's probably more than some people's salary. I don't see the real draw for it. So that's, that's one thing, right? I don't see why women are just into this stuff, sort of stuff, like following rich girls around. And then when you look at the Peloton ad, um, it kind of answers that because for the most part, this Peloton ad is directly aimed at especially women who are, you know, extremely wealthy. And every Peloton ad I've seen so far, and again, it's one of some really is, maybe that, that's where people maybe, maybe, um, maybe an, 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 analyze how Apple did it with the MacBooks. Because the MacBooks are not cheap items, but I want a MacBook, for instance, right? And I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily, I'm a millionaire yet. And people who have a high net worth also want MacBooks and they show them off as a point of, you know, as a form of luxury. Um, why is it how does how does that work compared to a peloton why are why doesn't macbooks or why don't apple get the same level of stick that peloton does even though there are there is some conversation around the macbooks being overpriced especially nowadays with the rise of google chromebooks and stuff and other laptop manufacturers coming out and really trying to push apple as far as they can go there may be more questions are being risen from it but for the most part people tend to like not really poo poo apple when they advertise the macbook so why does the peloton get such stick well it's because adverts like this First of all, when you get up on the screen, you've got a picture. The first image seen is of this young lady, fairly fit, with a really cute little daughter in her hand and toe, in this amazing apartment with these massive, you know, floor to ceiling windows that, you know, look out into a snowy garden. It's Christmas, it's snowing outside, the garden looks perfect, the perfect size for a daughter, perfect size for a, a, the husband to go out and do some pull ups, the perfect size for the wife to go out and do some yoga, and a kitchen counter that probably bigger than my entire kitchen right so that's the first scene and then it goes into this whole uh diatribe which is okay, funny as hell yes. now a peloton 
the husband gifts the wife with a peloton bike oh my god a peloton bike and just behind the peloton bike what do you see you see an open fire flame right not artificial kind not the ones that you see with the screen an actual real fire with logs on it a, a tree in front of it with an assortment of gifts different sizes different kind of gifts tiffany bracelet tiffany ring tiffany shoes tiffany bag tiffany 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 all over the place probably and a lovely peloton bike right in front of it all set up and ready to go i'm sure peloton bikes don't come assembled so the husband had to probably hire somebody from my builder or rated people or one of these companies or whatever sort of companies and get them to assemble the thing or if he's handy and he's he himself is an electronic engineer or a product designer he probably put it together himself give it up for our first time ride all right first ride i'm a little nervous and here's obviously and of course the the wife who is maybe a stay-at-home influencer mum is a big on social media even though she's recording the video in landscape mode that lets you know she probably has her own youtube channel and she's now recording herself sitting on this peloton bike riding it in the house and riding it into a structure now the in interesting thing about the peloton bikes is that i always got the feeling when i was doing something similar at home these home workouts which i was doing the uh oh what's it called man the beach body remember the beach body workouts i think with the the, the black guy i forgot that one that he was he did but i did that um workout and i remember doing it at home first for a while and now mom's side, you know just you know when you, you know when you start doing stuff and then imagine you start immediately especially living at home the moment you start doing things that people in your people in your house aren't doing everyone's got an opinion about it you know you start eating a different kind of food my mom started to you know tease me about you know whatever i was eating it just got annoying after a period of time so my mom started questioning me about my workouts i just thought you know what too much eyes on me as i'm doing the thing i just gotta do it in the park so i'll, I'll download i'd rip the kind of beach body workouts onto my ipad or onto a laptop no i had no i had the ipad at that time remember I, I had an ipad that i borrowed from work and then i'd go to a park and then start doing the workouts right and of course naturally what happens when you go work out in the park and you got your specific thing you're doing some wild lad comes along and starts asking oh mate can i join in like go no you can't join in. what do you want us to do like stand side to side and start doing burpees do you know how off-putting that is like i don't know you brother i'm not gonna i, I don't even want to shake your hand let alone do burpees side to side to you so that was annoying so then eventually I stopped doing it altogether and I just did the normal thing where normal people do. I got a gym membership, right? I went to the gym, I started running outside and things were okay. But I think that that kind of uh, at-home workout thing is a good primer before you head off to the gym, especially for me. I was a bit overweight. I was I didn't have that much self-confidence. So the initial weight loss and, you know, um, confidence of kind of gaining that coordination of your body, because if you've gone from the couch to working out in the gym, you know how hard it is just to kind of get your body to coordinate, right? Even when it comes to machines, you don't know where to put your hands, how do your shoulders fit? You're looking at the little instructions on the machine. It's really hard. So these little at-home workout things, I get why they work, because it allows people just to kind of get a little little bit confident have a little bit more assurance about how their body moves and then from there evolve and go on to the next step i don't think you do this until the end right sometimes that's why when they use these models with super chiseled abs and stuff it's quite ridiculous because for the most part these guys are maybe doing these at-home workouts as a top-up but they're not spending their, their predominant workout time isn't going to be centered around staring at a screen you know looking out onto their beautiful snowy garden that's not going to happen but if again we digress the woman is now looking at the camera telling herself how sweaty she is she's got the little sweat on they probably sprayed her with a bit of mist that they got from lush or something into her face to make her look wet and sweaty and now she's going to be pounding on that bike trying to get that body fit and prim okay Good. let's do this five days in a row you surprised i am 6 a.m. So weird. Rising with the sun. That was totally weird. It's just it. so weird. Look, look and, and six and it's going on. The seasons have changed now. Outside is sunny. There's lounge chairs out there. There's a guy now giving her instructions because obviously in the summer, guys are the best instruction givers. And now she's staring doughy eyed into the camera, thinking, oh my God, I, this is just so hard. I'm so thankful for this. And it continues. Still racing, racing. I just don't understand this. And then for some reason, do people do this? Do people cast. Their own, um, totally their own videos it. on a t on a flat TV screen to watch with their spouses. Is that a thing? Is that a thing that people do that? That is so bizarre. Like, I would hate it. Like, I, it annoys me. Actually, I'm getting wet, hot, and sweaty. Like, it annoys me when my friends pull me up and tell me, "Oh, I watch a video on YouTube." It's so cringe. You get so embarrassed. I can only imagine the level of ego, the level of narcissism that would need to be involved for a person to put their YouTube video or an Instagram story up on the big screen on their TV, or and and then get their partner to sit down and watch them ride a bike that's right next to them. Right? It's not like they're sitting down in a room. They're sitting down in the living room watching a TV of a bike that's sitting right there. This is bizarre beyond belief. But who can you say? A year ago, I didn't realize how much this would change me. 
Thank you. This holiday. As if your daughter's gonna be sitting there watching mommy just ride a bike. She wants a bit of cereal. She wants a sandwich, man. Get off that bike. Stop doing it like the great be of own jokes. Put down the the, the deadlifts, you know. Put down the barbell, Cynthia, and go make some. I'm gonna make my daughter a sandwich. She's crying. Do you know what I mean? What the fuck is this? This is insane. And again, this is gonna be very popular to the female audience. I just don't understand it because this this doesn't speak to the wide majority of women out there for the most part would a, would a lot of women be willing to spend that much amount of money on a on a stationary bike in the first place would they want to work out to extend at home have they got the room for it it's just so many if buts and maybes and again how big is that would maybe that's a maybe that's a point similar to like slamming kicks or a flight club because they've got high ticket items they can afford not to sell many of them because if they sell one they essentially pay for their rent right if you if you're a flight club if you sell a couple m m jordan fours you're basically covered for half a year so maybe a peloton if they sell five or four of these machines and again how how often do you have to change a peloton bike like is it like an iphone do they suddenly go do they suddenly do they suddenly become obsolete when the peloton bike 4.0 comes out or can you just use the same one you've had for five years I don't know, right? And again, if you're not using it that often, you probably won't get that much wear out of it. I'm pretty sure you can get over the air updates on it. It's just in a bizarre, and, and, but it's a common thing you see a lot with um with these fashion, uh, fitnessy model type influencers in the women's market. They seem to appeal to the everyday person, which I don't get. I don't think you, this could run in guy circles. I don't think a guy is watching Krishan and Ada being an influencer and thinking that they're going to get the same physique as him if they buy that setup ad machine. They're just letting him get his money. Get, get, you know, get, give him a couple of likes, give him a couple of dab to Instagram and keep him moving. But I think there's some women that actually believe if they get one of these bikes at home, they're going to suddenly turn into Angela Jolie. And it's just like, it's a bizarre because first of all, you got to afford it. These things are not cheap, right? It's like when I tried to buy a Concept 2 row machine for my place and I just realized I went online, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll just go, I'll just carry on using it at the gym then. Do you know what I mean? It's not, the, these items are not cheap in the slightest and yeah, I just don't get it. I really don't understand. But again, big up Peloton for uh, doing this. I think as a branding thing, it's pretty cool that they have this item, this product that essentially is only, you know, you only, the only, I don't think exercise bikes even had a brand name before peloton came around maybe the concept 2 is a good example of the row machine i don't think there was a, no one ever cared about a branding name of a peloton of a you know stationary bicycle and peloton have kind of uh, created this whole culture behind it, a whole scene david beckham is probably the most prominent um, ambassador of peloton he's always going to classes or spin classes they use peloton bikes and spin right or is it their spin bicycles i'm not sure but he's always going to those classes with his little cycling shoes in hand in new york or wherever he travels in america so that's a good thing but for the most part bloody hell man it's a very very bizarre thing that these things are so popular especially with the wide majority of people out there who are, un are unable to afford them but you know again maybe that's the whole point of branding isn't it to be able to kind of give people the illusion or the assumption they're going to be able to afford something that they clearly can't and it doesn't really appeal to them in the same regard as well, but you know.